So you've got yourself a post-64 Model 94 Winchester that looks like it just ripped its way out of the dark place. No worries. I got you. So in 1964, Winchester decided that they were going to cut some costs on some guns, and in doing so, they decided to use a sintered steel receiver, which caused a lot of problems down the road. It makes a real mess when you try to hot glue it, as you can see. The gun is completely disassembled. What we have to do is we've got to drop it in some vinegar so that we can remove any remnants of any bluing. But what's amazing about vinegar is it works almost instantaneously. It's been inside of this vinegar for about 38.7 seconds. And as you can see, already starting to wipe away whatever plum color was on there. And you can even speed it up a little bit faster if you use some steel wool on it while it's cooking wet. Give it about five minutes. That's all it takes. So if yours was anything like mine, it had some plum crazy purple bluing on it, cold blue something. It was a real bear to get off. But you can see the steel difference between the, the receiver and the barrel. So now what you want to do after you've had it soaking in vinegar, let's go rinse them. Follow me. Find yourself a nice dirty sink. Otherwise the vinegar will obviously continue to rust them in an inconsistent manner. So rinse. So let's take our parts over to the bench and get them prepped for bluing. I'm kind of skeptical of sanding this, but we're gonna just yeet. I'm gonna try to get all of this uniform. I don't know what alloys Winchester used at the time, but uh, we're gonna find out. You're gonna wanna make sure that you really rinse all of these really well. Otherwise, it's gonna start flash rusting on you, like you can see in the bottom of this receiver here. It's flash rusting already. So I'm gonna have to go over this with some uh, steel wool inside the receiver just to keep it from really going unwell. But that's fine, no big deal. So I've said it in previous videos, but I'm gonna say it again. While rust bluing, the finish of your steel is imperative. It is so important because based on the finish of the steel is gonna determine how well the acid that you apply to it bites. So if you polish it, like say to a 600 or an 800 or a 1000 grit, it's gonna take far more time for the acid to start biting, but it's gonna leave you with a much, much more polished, shiny finish. Now, if you were to go with say a 180, a 220, or a 320 grit, you're obviously going to have a much blacker, flatter, matter finish. So I think that's what we're gonna try on this one. I am a little bit skeptical sanding on this receiver, knowing that it's iron plated but I don't believe that it's gonna matter. If it does, we're gonna find out together. So let's get after it. We're gonna start with 180 grit sandpaper and we might not go much further than that. Should also note, it is a good idea if you're planning on this taking three or four or five days as rust bloom often does, to take a brush down through the bore here and maybe coat it in some oil. For what I do and how fast this is gonna be done for me, it's not something I have to worry about, but you know, as stated, 180 grit. So now that we've got the steel all cleaned up, I figure I'll do a little bit of a rundown of what we're gonna do here. If you haven't seen any of my old videos, this should catch you up to speed. We're gonna apply our rust bluing solution, and then we're gonna let it sit in here at about 100 degrees all night. Tomorrow, we'll put about three, four more coats on. What you're gonna do is you apply your rust bluing solution, you let it rust for about three, four hours, you take a piece of steel wool, or some denim or some rough rag or anything you got just to get the main scale off of it. You'll still have the nice brown going on. 
and then you apply your solution again, let it rust again. You do four, five, six, nine, 22, however many you want to do. The more you do, the darker the finish gets. When you are ready, you take it and drop it right inside of your conversion tank here, which is just a propane grill with a stainless steel tank on top of it filled with distilled water. Things that are important to know. When you're applying rust bluing solution, there's two things you have to be really, really afraid of. Number one is runs. So typically what people do whenever they're applying it, they use cotton swabs, which are great. They work just fine. One problem that you can run into though, is that it gets hypersaturated. And when you're running it down the steel, if a run forms, it's already too late. There's nothing you can do to save it except strip to bare steel. So it's really important that you make sure that when you soak some in, you squeeze as much as you can out because every little bit that prevents you from getting a run is important. You do not want the runs on your gun, okay? So the second thing is you can't overlap. So if you're applying and you overlap, what'll happen is with most of these solutions, it will copper plate. Once it copper plates, same deal as a run. You have to strip it to bare steel. So the goal is even strokes, no rubbing, nice long even strokes. Do not overlap, do not allow a run, and you'll have a great time with it. It works really good. So now that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get some more gloves on. We're gonna apply some blue solution. All it takes. I know, it doesn't look like anything. It will. I found that you do not want to touch the steel when it's wet, the only time. So if it's warm like it is right now, it evaporates really quickly. So you don't have to worry about that so much. Okay, so this is when things get a little bit more difficult whenever it comes to not overlapping. So what you have to do is you have to pick a reference point. On most barrels, you'll have indents or dovetails. That's where you wanna base your, your straightness from. So right here, I've got a hole where the plug bolts to. That's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna remember I'm on your side. Barreled actions are by far the worst to do. And that's just because they have so many little recesses and flippy doos and whatever might be hiding around every corner. So you just wanna be really careful with them. You don't wanna go over it twice. You don't want any runs. If you get even any kind of acid buildup, it's gonna copper plate and you're gonna have a bad time. Now, like I said, this has a degreaser in it, so I'm not afraid of touching it with gloves on, but you know, results may vary. So we're just gonna start by doing all the difficult places, like right in here, right here, right around the back. So that's it for today. We'll go ahead and let those rust overnight and I'll see you tomorrow. So it's been about three days since the last time I filmed, and since then I've gotten about six rust cycles in. I was intending to film all of this for you, but I'll do you one just as good. I'll leave a link in the description, or I might give you a little bubble here of a previous video where I went really deep on applying the rust bluing solution. But like I said, it's been about three days, six rust cycles, and I can tell you, this thing is looking really freaking cool, man. I'm really pumped to see whether this works or not, because if you're anything like me, You've probably scoured the internet with your flaking rusty post 64 trying to figure out what you can do with it and about everybody that you hear or read saying anything about them tell you to either dirt coat, Cerakote or paint them, polish them, whatever. They tell you to do pretty much everything except this. And the few people that have said that they've done this have said they've had good luck, but it's one hell of a commitment to dive into without knowing for sure. So. This is a late serial model number and it's iron plated. So if this works on one of these, we know for sure rust bluing will work on an iron plated receiver post 64. I've got the bluing tank all fired up. We're just waiting for it to boil now. 
And uh, once it boils, we're gonna get a close up of dropping it in and hopefully watching it convert to black. Here's the important bit. When you get to this point, all you have to do is drop it in the water and let it boil for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Once you let it boil, you pull it out, you hit it with your four aught steel wool, and then you dunk it in kerosene. So that's what we're gonna do now. If you're ready. Are you ready to figure out? I'm ready to figure out. It's been three, four days. It's time to figure out whether we can do this or not. I'm kind of freaking out, man. Go. So here's the one that really matters. Let's see what it does. And pray. We can pray together. Pray together. It's doing a thing. Let me get you over here so you can see. It's turning black! Ah! I just can't help myself. I'm kind of freaking out right now. So much wonder. Post 64 turns black with rust. I know, I acted like I knew what I was doing. I kinda knew what I was doing, but I didn't really know. So now we know for sure, we know. I know, it's freaking crazy, huh? You ever see Joy? This, this here, this is Joy. This is four days worth of work and about three months worth of planning, not really, kind of, three months worth of planning on doing this and just look at this freaking thing, man. Let's just take a peek, you ready for a peek? It did the thing, oh my god. At least it's not bright purple, pink, whatever. We'll see how it does whenever it's done. So I'm gonna check back in with you in about 30 minutes, okay? Ciao. I just can't get over it. I'm literally wigging over this right now. But we take a look at Here's the little piece. Oh, baby. Like we caught more than one fish. Hello. Look at that hammer. Oh, come here. Oh, baby. I mean, can you believe it? If you're wondering, that burns the shit out of your fingers. Alrighty, I can tell you, this is a major win. I am just completely satisfied with how these turned out. We have to do the final carding next, we'll time lapse it, and then I'll get you some pictures or some video after they've been coated in oil, because this is not the final finish. This is the finish before it needs carded and before it gets oil on it, because when you get oil on this, it's gonna turn about four shades darker than it currently is. But you can already tell it is not fair steel. This is completely blued and it looks freaking incredible. So let's go ahead and Let's get to carding this. Four out steel wool. Do not do this on your wife's carpet and don't do it on your kitchen table because somebody will be very, very unhappy with you. Anytime you're doing this, just be really careful of sharp edges. There's a good chance that you could wipe away the bluing there. When you focus all of the friction onto one area like that, it just obliterates it. Doesn't matter what you're using, whether you're using steel wool or denim, it'll obliterate it. So just be careful. So it's time for the final kerosene bath. I figured I'd give you a close-up of exactly what it's gonna look like. So this is before it has been dunked. But man, that's unbelievable compared to how it was.
can't get over it. So like I said before, it's going to get about four shades darker as soon as we dip it in some oil. You want to use kerosene because it draws out any kind of moisture that may be left over on the steel because if it rusts after this point, then you might have problems with your finish later on down the road. It will always be there. It'll be like a blem. So let it cure in kerosene for about two days and then you can go right ahead and assemble it and get it covered in some good oil. The longer it sets on this steel, the stronger it's going to get, but for now, it's fragile. So anyway, we're going to get these dunked and then the next time you see me, it's going to be assembled. Time has finally come. Let's do it. Ready? Wait. This thing is just quite amazing. It turned out awesome. So after many, many hours and lots of work, we finally got her all finished up. I really appreciate you guys watching. I love doing this shit. If you like it too, drop down and subscribe and maybe drop me a comment. Tell me how much you love the look of this thing because I am just frothing at the mouth over this. Anyway, hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. See ya.